yo what is going on guys welcome to another video and in today's video we are going to discuss the god honest truth about this 2022 bear market and i, I just want to be as cautious as honest and as precise as i can be as i uh communicate this information to you guys so let's just go ahead and get right into the video right so amid one of the worst starts to the year on record we saw that the s p 500 briefly plunged into a bear market literally on friday right and at one point, it was down more than 20% from its uh, intraday record high that it touched in January of uh, this year, right? And it also, the S&P 500 posted its seventh straight week of losses. Uh, this is the longest streak since March of uh, 2001. And it's crazy because when it had six weeks straight, of losses a lot of people were saying well this has never happened in history or it's ha only happened a handful of times so we're due for a bounce and we didn't get that bounce <laughs> right and i'm going to get into why we didn't get the bounce that everybody was hoping for and expecting for because if you just watch like cnbc and youtube and stuff everybody was saying last week like the week before the seventh week everybody was saying oh it's been six weeks we're gonna get a bounce blah 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 but here's why that didn't happen it probably would have happened if it weren't for this right so let's get into it uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, also closed the week uh, terribly and has now seen declines for eight straight weeks. This is the first time that has happened since 1923. This, this, this goes into what I've been telling you guys, right? I've been telling you guys that this particular bear market is special. This is going to be one for the books. Which is why I said, do not be thirsty to buy socks, right? Be patient because <laughs> this is going to be one for the books. This is going to shake out a lot of people and it could even cause an entire generation to never invest in stocks again because of how bad people are going to get wrecked in both stocks and crypto, which is why I keep saying be patient, but let's move on. Let's get to the main point. So the reason why stocks, in my opinion, my opinion, guys, right? This is real data, but in my opinion, uh, the reason why stocks did not bounce for that seventh week, which was last week, is because Wednesday stocks saw uh, their worst single day uh, decline in a very long time. And this was after Target reported revenues and profits that were worse than analysts' expectations. And this caused shares of that stock as well as other retail companies like Walmart and a few others, even Costco got hit. Uh, to dip as well and here's why this sharp sell-off in these companies as well as other goods slash uh, consumer companies shows that inflationary pressures are finally having an impact on earnings let me say that again the reason in my opinion why the market did not rebound and the sell-off got worse is because the data is showing that inflationary pressures are finally starting to have an impact on companies' earnings. What do you think that means for the Fed? <laughs> what do you think the Fed's gonna do about that? Because the Fed has made it perfectly clear that they do not care about the stock market. They didn't say it, but read between the freaking lines, people. And it's annoying when all these people come on my comments when I'm just literally trying to help. Everybody keeps saying, oh, just dollar cost average. Dollar. Yes, dollar cost average and index funds make sense. <clears throat> it does. But dollar cost averaging in the individual stocks, especially speculative stocks, especially growth stocks, because I keep hearing people say, oh, Neo so cheap, SoFi so cheap, this stock so cheap. I'm going to keep dollar cost averaging. A lot of these companies are not going to survive. I'm trying to get you to understand this. And we have a lot further to fall. Let me use data to back that up. OK, because now people are calling for a bounce next week and we could get a bounce. I don't know. I don't even care at this point. I'm holding cash regardless, and I don't expect whatever bounce we get to last anyway. Whatever bounce we get, it's probably going to last for a little bit, and it's going to go right back down. So who really freaking cares, right? <laughs> so let me show you guys something very interesting. I'm going to use some data here to back up my points that this is just the beginning of this bear market, right? Let me show you guys something. Let me show you guys this chart right here. So if you're looking at this chart, this is showing where we currently are uh within the last 96 trading days so year to date there have approximately been 96 trading days right right now we are teetering between 19 percent to 20 percent which is bear market territory on the s p 500 right now if you look at this chart you could see history you can see what history tells us right you see in 2020 right 2020 you can see 
that uh, we were down 34% before we started to mount to go back to the upside, right? That was that was the peak of the bear market in uh, 2020, which was very short lived. And obviously, this is because you started to get things talk of it, uh, vaccines and different things like that that made investors feel better. Um, <clears throat> I know not everything is pictured on this graph, but I got some other data, so I'm just going to go through it. Not everything is on here, guys, but I'll just go through it. Uh, 2007 of October, uh, the S&P 500 fell 56 percent. Remember, right now, <laughs> we're only down 19 to 20 percent. We're just entering the bear market, right? So 2020, you went 34%. S&P 500 went negative 34%, right? 2007, it fell 56%. Woo, you guys think the market is bad now? Woo, can you imagine if the S&P 500 fell 56%? Can you imagine that? Woo, we, I can tell you right now, a bunch of you guys would never invest in stocks again because you would get murdered so bad. Like a lot of people would literally lose all their money, literally, if the S&P 500 fell 56%. And then, yeah. You'd have an entire generation of investors who just would never buy stocks again, which is unfortunate. Uh, 2000, you had the S&P 500 go down 49%. Uh, 1987, you had the uh, S&P 500 go down 34%. 1973, 48%. 1968, 36%. 1961, 28%. And then 1931 through 1932, you had negative uh, 62%. What am I trying to say? Well, what I'm trying to tell you guys is if history is a good indicator, which we know it is. I'm sorry. Let me adjust this camera. It's a little tilted. There we go. If history is an indicator of what's to come, this is just the beginning. We have a lot further to fall in stocks. Yes, folks. Bear markets are brutal. And it's very important that retail gets out of this thought that just because things are so low and so cheap, they're going to stop selling off. It's not how it works. It doesn't work like that. Mathematically, it doesn't work like that. There's no, there's no bottom for the S&P 500, right? Like, they're, they're, they're like, not in the way that you guys think. There's no rule that says the S&P 500 can only fall 20%. I just gave you the data. It's fallen 50% before. And like I said, you think 20% is bad. Imagine if it falls 50%. And I'm willing to go as far as to tell you guys, I think it could fall very, very low. Now, I'm not so sure it'll go 50%, but I don't know. But this is why I'm holding cash. Now, I want to make it very clear. Buying the S&P 500 index fund makes sense. Buying some sort of total stock market, total world, or S&P 500 index fund, DCAing, Makes sense. But let's make sure we know how to dollar cost average. Right? I want to make sure everybody understands this. Dollar cost averaging is not every time it dips, every day I buy. So Monday it dips, I buy. Tuesday it dips, I buy. Wednesday it dips, I buy. No, that's not dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is exactly how your money from your paychecks gets deposited into your 401k. Every paycheck, which is in two week increments, or even in a week increment, if that's how your, if that's how your pay works. Money gets deposited to the S&P 500. That actually makes more sense because you're putting extra time in between, right? Like imagine if you bought, not last Friday, but the Friday before. So imagine you bought two weeks ago, that huge dip, and then this last Friday, you bought again. That's dollar cost averaging because it was such a huge drop. That actually makes sense. But I just want to make sure people really understand how to truly buy the dip. And when you're buying the dip too, Noticing your paycheck, a tiny amount of money goes into your uh, retirement. That's how you should buy stocks. It should be tiny fractions of your money slowly over time if you're going to go to dollar cost average method. Now, that's what I would do. And that's what I'm personally doing with index funds. And just to make it clear, too, because I know I've gotten some hate recently for the Tesla stuff and calling into individual stocks. And I know I've originally said that Apple... Uh, would do very well, blah, 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 blah. We get it. I already apologize. Fine. But let me make one thing very clear. And this is why I'm not going to address anybody who, who comes to me with hate anymore. I had to realize, like, wait a minute. I t- I've been telling people to buy index funds for months. Like, that's literally the type of investor I am. So I'm like, wait a minute. Why am I apologizing for individual stocks when I don't even have that many individual stocks? Like, the bulk of my portfolio is index funds. I had to think about that. So I'm done apologizing for individual stocks because I made it very clear on this channel that even the professionals can't beat the market. 
So forget a retail investor trying to research stocks and value a stock and do all this research and analysis. Even the people, the smartest minds in the world, the best investors, even the Wall Street guys who went to, who got all these fancy degrees can't beat the market over a long period of time. They could do it in one year or two years, but over a 10-year, 20-year, 30-year period, they're not going to beat the market, which is why I tell everybody it actually makes more sense to just buy the SP 500 because... 99.9% of people are not going to beat it, even the professionals. And I can't make that more clear than I am now. Just buy index funds. If you're thinking, oh, but I want to get rich quick. I want to get 10,000% return on my money. Okay. Take your money, go to the casino, and hope that you hit it big. Because that's the same thing that you're doing. When you're looking for an individual stock and you're getting greedy, and instead of saying, I'm hoping to get a 10 to 15 to maybe 18%, depending on your risk, right? Something reasonable, right? Maybe even a 20%. There's some stock, there's some individual stock individual stocks I have that I expect to get a 20% return on. Uh that's the truth. Not every year, but you, you know what I mean. Um you have to be more realistic, <laughs> right? And I want to make this very clear. If you're gonna go to individual stock route and you're gonna get greedy and say, I don't want 10% return on my money every year. Like I'm guaranteed to get investing in the S&P 500. I want 200% or 30% like Jeremy LaFay promises in his uh his financial fortress course, right? Okay, this is what I will tell you. You want 30%, you want 50%, you want 100%, you want to get greedy, you want to strike it big, you want to get rich quick, you want to go crazy, then take your money to Vegas. Take your money to the casino. Because that's what you're doing. You're gambling. That's not how it works. It's not how life works. Life doesn't work where you get 100%, 200% return, blah, blah, blah. Well, it happened in crypto. Okay. Go ahead. See how that works for you. <laughs> Go right ahead. And honestly, I, I, it actually did happen to me for real. That, that really is the God honest truth. I actually really did get a 1,000% return on my money. I 10x my money in Cardano because I bought it at 17 cents and the dang thing ran to $3. Now, thankfully... Well, I guess not thankfully. I, in hindsight, I wish I had all my money in there, but I didn't. I had a, like a small amount of money. A decent amount, but a small amount. You know what I'm saying? So it did happen, but I still recognize that I just got lucky. There's no other way around it. It is so rare that you're able to 10x your money. I just got lucky. And luck is different from skill, and skill and luck and gambling is different from investing. Okay? So that's why I say buy the S&P 500 or buy some type of Total stock market index fund. That is the best and smartest decision you could do. I promise you, if you put as much money as you can over a period of several years, like four, five, 10, 15, 20 years, you are going to be rich. You're going to be a millionaire if you do that. The problem is you're not going to be a millionaire overnight. You'll probably be a millionaire in 10 years, 20 years, depending on how much money you put in there. I am extremely aggressive. I am putting a lot of money into this and I'm making sacrifices, right? I put as much money as I can in the index funds because I know that it's going to make me rich over time, but I'm also sacrificing. So not buying as much as much clothes, not buying as much shoes, living below my means, making sure I'm not living in a freaking $2,000 apartment, which most of the people who live here in Chicago like me do. And I'm just thinking like, hmm, yeah, no judging, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that's a smart idea when you're only making $50,000, but whatever. That's the Chicago culture we live in. So anyway. Uh, yeah, hopefully that helped guys. Uh, let me, I know I've talked for a while, but I just really want to make sure I communicate how I feel and help the best way I can. Right. So just to talk about what's going on next week, a lot of people are calling for a bounce. This is what I will say. Ignore those people who are saying the stock market is going to bounce unless you're a legit professional bona fide trader, which some people are legit traders and are good at that. But over here, we're investors. So for me, I don't give a crap what the market does next week. I don't care if it bounces. I don't care if we see a ridiculous, insane rally. I do not care because I know in my body, in my bone, in my soul that the market is going to drop lower. I don't think 20% is the bottom for the SP 500. I think it could fall 30%. I think we have further to go. I really do. I really do. That's the honest truth. And I just want to prepare people for it. And let me answer this last question. Oh, no, I have to get to what's happening next week. So next week's going to be huge. Next week. Unfortunately, the Fed speaks again. I know, I know. It's like, well, they just shut up. Like, they talk every freaking week. Shut up. <laughs> but that's what they do. They like to run their mouth. So, Jerome Powell will be speaking next week. Apparently, he's doing welcoming remarks. 
via a pre-recorded video at the National Center for American Indian Enterprise Development. So that's happening on Tuesday. Wednesday, we have FOMC Minutes. Now, not the FOMC meeting. That's in June. We have the FOMC Minutes. Okay? So we got that coming up. So I expect more volatility next week. But like I told you guys, I get to sleep at night and enjoy this nice weather we're having in Chicago and enjoy life and be happy. You know why? Because I'm not trying to time this stuff. And I recognize that the market is going lower. So I'm just holding cash. Whatever the market does next week, I don't care. And you shouldn't either. And if there are any YouTubers that are telling you to buy stocks right now, uh, I strongly disagree with that. I really do. I do not think that's a good idea. Now, I've seen Stockmo has still been saying to do that. I see Chris Sane and Jeremy have, have uh, all been saying kind of... Well, actually, I don't know if Jeremy has. But I know me, Kevin did too. But anyway, most of the big YouTubers are still, so tell, still telling people to buy stocks. And it's just so dangerous because... I think this is everybody's first bear market, right? Uh, we know me, Kevin, didn't start trading until like 2019, 2020. He's new too. I didn't start until 2017. So technically, stock mode didn't start his channel until whatever. And all that, he was a finance teacher and all that. I don't care. The dude doesn't know anything of what he's talking about. But anyway, this is everybody's first bear market. But what I did was I actually did a lot of reading and research and I'm trying to present the data that I'm reading to you guys, because even though I've never seen a bear market before, I am looking at history to get an idea of what's going to happen now. And based on history, it looks like we're probably going to go lower, guys. I don't think this is the bottom. Now, we could get some bounces. We could. And it's going to trick retail. And then you're going to start to see all the YouTubers. Holy smokers, folks. I told you. I told you. Even though I told you to buy Tattooed Chef at $20. I also told you to buy it at seven because I've been making videos telling you to buy Tattooed Chef every month for the last two years. You know, like they, they, these YouTubers play these little tricks. But anyway, I don't want to make it about them. I just want to give some honest, helpful uh, strategy on what I plan to do. That'll go ahead and conclude today's video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.